Maximize your yields while spreading out your workload with the earliest maturing winter cereal. Visit kws.com slash CA to see how our hybrid rye varieties can work for you. High yields, high quality, high value for your farm. KWS, seeding the future since 1856. Hey, welcome back to VL Agriculture. I'm Chase Chambers. Today I'm here with Chris Hansen, and we're going to be talking about targeted broadcast. How's it going? Good. Cool. So the first question is, uh, what's your role at Deer? So I'm the Region 4 Small Grains Agronomist. I'm responsible for Western Canada, uh, the Northern Plains, Central Plains of the U.S., and Australia. And do you want to talk about what target broadcast is and how it differs from spot spraying? Yeah, so um, you know, part of the rhetoric that we're trying to change around, uh, you know, as you call it, spot spraying, is uh, there are labels that exist today for uh, a spot spray application. And what that actually means is when we're using like a backpack sprayer or, you know, a small pump sprayer to, you know, in a lot of cases they're used to spray lawns or, you know, in our driveway, things like that. Um, targeted broadcast is, uh, it's really what we're doing with a sprayer that has, you know, some sort of camera technology on it. And, you know, we're, we're treating certain areas of the field differently, um, you know, based on, uh, you know, when a farmer would typically go in and, and bro do a broadcast application, um, this is treating those areas just a little bit differently and, and maybe only spraying in those areas that need to be sprayed where there's weeds, where there's things like disease pressure, um, you know, potentially nutrient deficiencies, things like that. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned two main types of target broadcast. Yeah, so um, so with John Deere, we have uh, Sea and Spray Select, which is capable of green on brown application. Um, so that's any situation where, uh, you know, we have weeds that are growing on a, on a brown or black background. So, you know, thinking about soil or, or residue. And then we also have uh, green on green technology, which is, uh, which is part of our premium and, and ultimate sprayers, where we're, we're looking at um, you know, a, a field that has existing crop and we're trying to spray weeds out of that existing crop. All right, and how does this technology work? How does it decide what's being sprayed? Yeah, so uh, Select works on a, a, a methodology called pixel classification where it looks at an image and it looks for um, things that are essentially green or fall within the green spectrum. So it's, it, you know, compared to the, the, the ultimate and, and premium offers that we have, um, it is much a uh, much simpler uh, approach. Um, now, with the premium and ultimate uh, machines, we we use what's called computer vision machine learning. Um, so, with that technology, we're we're able to identify what is crop and and what is a weed, and we're able to pick out and spray individual weeds in those scenarios. And is there any big disadvantages or struggles with this technology? So, so with the green on brown, um, you know, it does have the limitation that, you know, we aren't able to spray in crop today. Um, but with the Sea and Spray Premium and, and Ultimate machines, we, we can do that. Um, the, the biggest disadvantage with the, the approach that we take on Premium and Ultimate is that, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, just the time and the effort that it takes to generate and train those models. Um, so, you know, there, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. I would say that the, the select technology has a much broader scope. Um, you know, it doesn't need to necessarily be trained on anything. It, as long as something is green, we're able to spray it. Versus the other technology, you know, it, it, it is capable of those green on green capabilities, but it does require a significant time and, and money investment to, to make those models work. And then do you want to talk about what's behind you? Yeah, so this is a, a Sea and Spray Select machine on a, on a 410R chassis. Um, so this sprayer is, is 120 feet and it has 36 cameras and, and five image processing modules on it. Um, so that, that's a little bit different. You know, you can obviously buy this sprayer with, without the technology, but what we've done is we've, we've in, installed all that from factory and, you know, are offering it as, a, as an option for, for our customers. Um, so with those 36 cameras across the boom, uh, we're continually scanning in front of the sprayer and, and looking for green plant material and anytime that we see something that is green uh, the the camera sends that uh, message to the the IPMs or the image processing modules on the sprayer and it, it tells that nozzle to turn on uh, with sufficient amount of time so that it's able to uh, you know develop the spray pattern uh, it's able to spray over top of the weed and then it shuts off after it's not detecting any more green 
Awesome. And is there anything Deers working on for the future, or where do you see the future of this tech? Um, you know, I, I, like there, there's definitely things that we're working on, stuff that I, I'm not able to really uh, divulge or, or talk about today. Um, but you know, you, you can think about you know the future. Um, you know, with with say like the Sea and Spray Ultimate Machine um, and, and premium offerings, uh, we are able to spray in corn, soybeans, and uh, uh, corn, soybeans, and cotton today. Um, you know, you, you can probably envision that we will expand into other crops. So, um, you know, thinking about small grains, um, you know, wheat, canola, barley, things like that, um, you know, definitely look towards the future for something to come there. Awesome. Is there anything else you want people to know? I, I don't think so. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, so, thanks for your time. Yep. Yeah.